Okay. Hey, 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 Ben. The Pesach offering that one slaughtered for some other designation or the Kohen received, transported, and threw the blood for some other designation or for its own designation and then for some other designation or for some other designation and then for its own designation is invalid. What is an example of for his own designation and then for some other designation? For the designation of a Pesach offering first and then for the designation of a Pesach offering, a peace offering. What is an example of for some other designation and then for its own designation? For the designation of a peace offering and then for the designation of a Pesach offering. If he slaughtered it for some for, for other than those who can eat it, for other than its registrants, for uncircumcised or contaminated persons, it's invalid. If he slaughtered it for those who can eat it and for those who cannot eat it, for its registrants and for other than its registrants, for circumcised and uncircumcised persons, or for contaminated and uncontaminated persons, it is valid. If he slaughtered it before noon, it is invalid because it is said in the afternoon. If he slaughtered it before the afternoon daily offering, it is invalid. It is valid, provided someone stirs the blood until the dead blood of the daily offering is thrown. Yet, if it has was thrown, it is valid. One who slaughters the Pesach offering with chametz in his possession is in violation of a negative commandment. Rabbi Yehuda says also the daily offering. Reb Shimon says if one slaughters the Pesach offering on the 14th under its own designation, he's liable. But if under some other designation, he is not liable. And for all other sacrifices, whether slaughtered for their own designation or under some other designation, he is exempt. And if one slaughters the Pesach during the festival under its own designation, he's exempt. Under some other designation, he is liable. And for all other sacrifices, whether slaughtered under their own designations or under some other designations, he's liable, except for a sin offering, which is slaughtered under some other designation. Okay. Okay. Um, fine. So now we move uh, into more, uh, more narrative over here, just describing the, the procedure of the Gorban Pesach Bismano. Um, so it, it'll be pretty simple. Um, there's, there's no lambdas, it's just telling us uh, like what happened. So Pesach Nishrat Shalosh Kito. So there were three uh, three groups of uh, of people who were brought in to, to, to bring the Korban Pesach. Shinima Vashachatu or so called Kahala Das Israel. So they, 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 there's a drasha from the Pasuk because you've got um, Kahal Adas Israel, which is which implies three three separate groups that they that they come in. It's not this is not like um, a, a, like a halacha um, a doris or anything like that. It's just uh, it's an asmachta for for the practice that they had in the time of the mikdash. Nichnas Akasri Shana. So the first uh, group comes in. Nismales Hazaras. So they basically let people in until the whole Hazar is full. Nalu Dalsas Hazara, and then they lock the doors because that's enough. We can't get any more any more people in. Taku the Hariu Vasakul. So they blew the, the shofar. Aquanim Omdim Shura Suros. And the Kwanim stood in rows upon rows, ready to do the Avoda. Bidehem Bazike Kesef Bazike Zahav. And they were holding um, containers. Uh, of uh, that were made of gold and silver, and they would uh, and sure shall shekula kesef kesef sure shekula zahav zahav. So it wasn't just haphazard; they would have them in in a whole rows. They would make sure that it would be a whole row of silver and a whole row of gold. So just to look good. Okay, lo They wouldn't they wouldn't mix it up. They wanted it to have a uh, to to look pretty. Okay, velo hayu habazikin shulayim, and furthermore the. Um, the bazichin, that's these uh, these containers that they would catch the blood in, they would not have a base. So it would have a rounded or a pointed base so that uh, because that removes the temptation to put it down for a second and then the, and allow the blood to congeal. So basically they had no option but to keep it in their hands, otherwise the blood would spill. Okay, Israel So when you have a situation like this, the ideal situation, the ideal way to do the uh, the avoda is that the Israel who's bringing the korban he can do the shkita because shkita is kosher by Israel. That's the only part of the avoda that's kosher for a non kohen. Okay, and since he can do it, he should do it because the kohen have got their hands full with plenty of other stuff. <coughs> okay, so shachat Israel v'kibel kohen. 
And so he shechts and the, and the coin catches the blood. And then they make a chain passing the, the blood from hand to hand. So one direction they would be passing the, the full containers of blood and on the way back they'd, they'd return the empty ones. And the coin who's standing closest to the Mizbeach, he would do one throw on the on the corner. He'd put it on the northeastern corner, uh, uh, so which is uh, all that the Pesach requires, only one splash of blood on the Mizbeach, near, near the base. Okay, so, so you can imagine, remember the scale you're talking about. You've got thousands and thousands of people standing there all with the Korban Pesach. So they got him, they, they can't have Koanim walking backwards and forwards saying, okay, I'm taking this blood to the, to the base because they, they got to bump into each other. It's going to be a whole balakan. So they're all, it's all orderly. They catch the blood and then, then they make a human chain passing the blood from one person to another and just, it, it, it moves, things move. You've got, and it's really going to have to move. And imagine like in our time, when we're going to reinstate the Korban Pesach, we, we're like much more numerous than Israel has ever been. So it's going to have to be efficient. Or else we're going to have to make a much bigger base of Mekdash. Okay. okay. So the, the first group of, uh, of, of people who once, all they had to do was to stand there and wait for their, for their Korban, uh, where stay in that Sheikh, their Korban, wait for the blood to be thrown. So it shouldn't really take that long for each individual uh, for each individual um, korban. Just that you've got a lot of them, and only a few, uh, and you know, only a few koanim who are doing it. I mean, all, presumably all the koanim are, are there in in Yerushalayim on duty, because you know it's it's a it's the moed. Everyone's got to come to to Yerushalayim. So you've got all the koanim in the country, but then you've also got the, all the Israelim in the country. So everyone's in Yerushalayim. Um, so there's so whatever it is, the koanim are only a small fraction of the people. Um, so that's probably the bottleneck. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm thinking like a like a project manager over here. Um, anyway, so in comes the so so I, the first ones have finished have finished all their korbanot, um, and they've got their animals under their arms, and they walk out and they walk out. And in comes the second group. What happened? Hold it. So we were up to where the uh, with the, with the, the first group goes out, the second group comes in. After this, uh, the same procedure is repeated, the second group goes out, the third group comes in. It's exactly the same procedure for all three. So meanwhile, in the background, the, the Levim are, are, are singing the Hallel. If they feel, if they finish the Hallel, then they, then they start singing it again. And if they finish it a second time, then they start singing it a third time. So they've got a musical accompaniment in the background while all of the shit is taking place. Even though it never happened that they needed to go in, they had to, they had to sing Hallel a third time. So Rabbi Yoda says that as a matter of fact, in the third group, People were so uh, people were so you know anxious to go and get the, the the korban done and to do the mitzvah that there was hardly ever anyone left in the third group. So the so the, the procedure was very quick. There wasn't much of a queue for the for the shechita and the kabbalah and whatever. So the koanim never even got to ahavti ki Hashem before the whole job was done. Okay, that's uh, that's today's mishnah. I'm sorry for the lady singing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I could barely hear it. I just hear the music. Go on. I'm not for me, but you know. <laughs> All right. Um, vav. Uh, base vav. And these are the herbs which one fills uh, his, with which which one fills his obligation on Pesach with lettuce, endives, horseradish, chachavina, and mara. One fulfills his obligation with them, whether moist or dry, would not preserved, nor stewed, nor boiled. They combine to the size of an olive, and one. And one can fulfill his obligation with the stalk, with the mai, and with the first tithe whose truma has been separated, and with consecrated property and second tithes that were redeemed. We may not soak bran for chicken, but we may scald it. We may not soak bran to take with uh, a woman may not soak bran to take with her to the baths, but she may rub it on her dry skin. A man may not chew wheat and place it on his wound on Pesach because it becomes chametz. Flour may not be put into the chorosis, 
nor into the mustard. However, if one did put it in, it must be eaten immediately. Reb Meir for business. Okay. There's one more. Um, after Ches. Oh, I should finish it though. We may not cook the Pesach offering neither in liquids nor in fruit juices, but we may baste and dip in, in them. The waters used by a baker must be poured out because they become hummus. Right. Uh, I guess that they want them to eat this right away. It says it must be eaten immediately, maybe before it becomes hummus. Before it becomes hummus, that's right. Okay. Um, gimel, Gimel. Arabin. If he placed it on a tree higher than 10 to Fakum, his Arab is not valid. Below 10 Fakum, his Arab is valid. If he placed it in a ditch, even 100, uh, 100 cubits deep, his Arab is valid. If he put it atop a reed or atop a pole, so long as it has been uprooted and it is stuck into the ground, even if it is 100 cubits high, his Arab is valid. If he placed it in a locker and lost the key, the Arab is valid. Rabbi Eliezer says, if he does not know that the key is in his place, the Arab is not valid. Valid. If he rolled beyond the tachum, or a heap fell on it, or burned, or it was teruma from which became contaminated, if it was still day, the Arab is invalid. If after dark, the Arab is valid. If it is in doubt, Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda say he is caught in between, and Rabbi Yossi and Rabbi Shimon say a doubtful Arab is valid. Said Rabbi Yossi, uh, Avumos attested in the name of the five sages that a doubtful Arab is valid. A person may attach a condition to his Arab and say, if Gentiles come from the east and my Arab is to the west, if it's from the west, my Arab is to the east, if they come from both directions, I shall go to the place I choose. And if they do not come from either direction, it is uh, I, I, as my town people. If a scholar comes from the east, my Arab is to the east. And if the west, my Arab is to the west. If one comes to here and one comes to there, I shall go to the place I choose. If to neither direction, I am as my town people. If Yehuda says if one of the scholars was his teacher, he must go to his teacher. But if both were his teachers, he may go to the place he chooses. Okay. Next. Master Shani, hey, Tesfab. Yochanan the high priest abolished the Mysa confession. He also abolished the wakeners and the strikers. Until his days, the hammer used to beat in Yerushalayim. And in his days, to ask, and, and he needed, no one needed to ask concerning the mind. Five species are liable to chala. Wheat, barley, spelt, oats, and rye. These are liable to chala and combine with one another, and they are forbidden on account of Kadash before Pesach and to be reaped before the Omer. And if they took root before the Omer, the Omer releases them, but if not, they are forbidden until the next Omer. If one eats of them an Kazayas uh, of Matzah on Pesach, he has fulfilled his obligation. A Kazayas book of Chomat, he is liable to Kharat. If one of them mixed up with other kinds, he is a transgression of, of Pesach. If one vows to abstain from bread and tuba, uh, they are forbidden to him. So, so says Reb Meir. But the Chachamim say, if one vows to abstain from Dagon, he is permitted, prohibited from these Oni, and they are liable to Chala and Masaros. Mm. These are liable okay, to Chala. That's, done. that's it. We just needed two from Chala. Okay. Need a Yud base. If a neither examined herself on the seventh day in the morning and found herself to be Tahor, and at twilight she did not separate into Tahara, and after several days she examined herself and found herself to be Tomei, she has a presumption of Tahara. She examined herself on the seventh day in the morning and found herself to be Tomei, and at twilight she did not separate into Tahara. And after some time she examined herself and found herself to be Tahor, she has a presumption of Tuma. If she conveys Tuma, retroactively for a period of 24 hours or from examination to examination. But if she has a fixed period, her time suffices for her. Rabbi Yehuda says, as long as she did not separate the Tahara from the time of Mincha or later, she has a presumption of Tumah. 
But the Chachamim say, even if on the second day of her meetup period, she examined herself and, for, um, and found herself to be Tahor, and at twilight she did not separate in Tahara, and after some time she examined herself and found herself to be Tamei, she has a presumption of Tahara. If a Zav and a Zavra examined themselves on the first day and found themselves to be Tahor, and again on the seventh day and found themselves to be Tahor, but on the other days in between they did not find themselves, Rabbi Eliezer says they have presumption of Tahara. Rabbi Yeshua says they have only the first day and the seventh day, and Rabbi says they have only the seventh day. One more. There is one more? One more, yeah. Now we've got, uh, we've got to do your Mishnah Dalla too. Okay. Regarding Azav, Azav, Anida, a woman who has given birth and a Mitzora who died, they can make tumor through Misa, uh, until Misa, until the flesh decays. But a non Jew who dies and pure, and is pure of conveying tumor through Misa, Masa. Beit Shammai says all women who die are Nidos, but Beit Philo says only one who died when she actually was a Nida is a Nida. Uh, if five selim of the son in the Tyranian mana, the 30 selim of the slave, the 50 of the violator and the seducer, and the 100 of this one who defames his wife are all in the she shekel of the sanctuary in the Tyr Tyranian mana, all of them may be redeemed with money or an equivalent with the exception of the shekelim. One may redeem either with slaves, with loan documents, or with land. And similarly, not in the case of consecrated objects, he wrote to a Kohen that he owes him five selim. He's obligated to give them to him, but his son is not redeemed. Therefore, if the Kohen wishes to give him a gift, he may. If one sets aside money for the redemption of his son and it is lost, he's responsible for it as it is to states, as, as it is stated, it shall be years and you shall be redeemed. The Makor receives two shares of the father's property, but he does not receive two shares of the mother's property. Neither does he receive two shares of the improvement of what is fit to come from what is already in his possession. Neither does a woman collect a ketubah from these, uh, or nor for the daughters for their sustenance, nor the Yavam. None of them receives from the improvement of, nor of what is fit to become as far as uh, from what is already in his possession. Yeah. Okay. We're, well, we're almost finished with this. Oh. Yeah, almost done. And um, get in. Uh, if a minor girl said, receive my get for me, it is not a get until it reaches her hand. Therefore, if the husband wants to retract, he can retract because a minor cannot appoint an agent. But if a father said to him, go receive my daughter's get from her, from her uh, I'm sorry, go receive my daughter's get for her. If he wants to retract, he cannot retract. If one says, give his get this get to my wife in such and such a place, and he gave it to her in a different place, it's void. If he said, she is in such and such a place, and give it to her in a different place, it's valid. If a woman said, receive my get for me and in such and such a place, and received it for her in a different place, it's void. If Eliezer validates it, it is said, bring my get from such and such a place, and he brought it to her from a different place, it's valid. If a woman said, Give me, bring me my get, she may eat truma until the get reaches her hand. If she said, receive my get for me, she is forbidden to eat truma immediately. If she said, receive my get for me in such and such a place, she may eat truma until the get reaches that place. Reb Eliezer prohibits this immediately. If one says, write a get and give it to my wife, divorce her or write a letter and give it to her, they may write and give it to her. Uh, if, if it said, release her, provide for her, do for her as is customary, or do for her as proper, he did not say anything. Originally, they said, one goes out in, the, in chains and, and says, write a gift for my wife. They write and give. They, that latter said, I also one who sets out to sea, and one who was sleeves in a caravan, Reb Shimon Kishori says, also one who is in danger. Okay, I'd can. All right. All right. Have a wonderful Shabbos. We'll see you in Mitzvah Shabbos. Good right. oh, morning. You're a family. You're, you're a single guy now. Single guy. Well, single guy with uh, with kids. With kids, <laughs> right? <Single dad. laughs>
They should have left you the baby. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> see ya. Have a great one. Well, thank you. Bye.